Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have with me the Galaxy A55 5G and we're going to do a full review. Let's get started. This device is part of Samsung's mid-range, in one of its highest levels, and is possibly one of the most attractive devices today because it comes very balanced. The launch price in Mexico has been 8,999 pesos for the edition with 128 gigabytes of storage. That is approximately $545, although remember that the prices here are not the same as there. In addition, there is also an addition of 256 gigabytes of storage, that is twice as much, at a price of 9,999 pesos, that is approximately $605. Although I insist, the prices here are not the same as there and the exchange rate could vary a lot. The truth is that the price in Mexico seems to me to be good enough. Surely in promotions you will find it even cheaper. So, it is a very good alternative especially considering the competitors in the same price range. At least here in Mexico it seems to have some strong competitors, other competitors not so much. So join me to see what we can find in this device which by Samsung stores, department stores, phone companies, online stores. So it's very easy to find one of these devices in a store. Now join me to get to know it in depth. Let's start by taking a look at the front of this device and possibly aesthetically this is one of its weakest points because it is actually a device with considerably thick bezels. Take into account that it is not only the black bezel that is close to the screen but also the frame that makes this device end up being quite a bit, a bit wider and a bit taller, overall a bit bigger than the rest of the devices that have similarly sized screens. So in this sense, it does not feel as modern as other proposals from manufacturers that have curved screens or much smaller bezels. On an aesthetic level, I think the front part could be left owing, but on a resistance level, no, because it integrates Gorilla Glass Victus Plus to ensure an excellent level of resistance. This glass is generally used only in high-end devices, so it stands out that we find it in a mid-range device. On the right side, we will find the buttons on the so-called key island in a new aluminum frame. So in this sense, also Samsung gets ahead of several of its competitors, resuming the good path it had for several years in devices even in the low range where it integrated metal frames. This gives you a feeling of a device with greater strength and greater durability and even feels much more solid in the hand. In addition, the theme of integrating the buttons in this small relief makes it have a unique touch of design along with all its brothers of the A-series to distinguish itself a bit from the rest of the smartphones. At the top we find the tray where we can place the nano SIM card and surprisingly also the micro SD card. This is another point in its favor because several of its competitors do not have this expandable storage option. On this side will also be the microphone, while on the left side we can simply take a look at these straight frames that it has to give it a solid touch. In this case the device is 8.2 millimeters thick. And on the bottom we have the new speaker design, along with two other microphones and the USB-C port. The device has a weight of 213 grams and on the back cover you immediately realize that it is a Galaxy, due to its minimalist design. Unlike the vast majority of other manufacturers who are betting on designs a little more colorful or with more reflections or with much more striking camera module designs. In this case, Samsung is going for the minimalist trend, offering you this device in various colors. In this case, I have the ice blue color, but it is also available in lilac, lime and dark blue. It should be noted that this back cover is also made of glass, protected with Gorilla Glass. Therefore, it gives us a feeling of a much more premium device than most other mid-range equipment due to the materials used and also due to the level of resistance it achieves. Because it has IP67 certification, so we are sure that it will withstand some fall in the water. Very few devices in its price range can boast this level of water resistance, so it is definitely another of the most striking sections of this device, and considered one of its strengths. The screen is another section where Samsung generally does not disappoint. So here we find an AMOLED panel of excellent quality with a full HD plus resolution of 2340 by 1080 pixels. 
It is really going to give us very intense colors, very high contrast thanks to this technology, and also a fairly high brightness. Its peak is 1000 nits, so it will give us a good outdoor display. And also when viewing HDR content, we will be able to have a much more realistic experience. In this case, it reaches a pixel density of 390 pixels per inch. So you can see everything very sharp, even text with smaller fonts. Then notice how the maximum brightness will allow you a very comfortable use outdoors and also has a considerably low minimum brightness for comfortable use at night. Obviously in addition to the eye protection mechanisms that you can enable. It also has 120 Hz in its refresh rate to have a smooth experience as it should have a device of this price. It is also going to offer us two types of color calibration, whether we want a little more natural colors or more intense colors. In fact, we can also access more advanced settings to customize the color of the screen just the way we like it. So the screen is definitely very good. It also retains good viewing angles. Possibly the white color like many other AMOLED screens is a little hard to keep it from some side, but it is nothing really serious. The rest of the colors are really well maintained as well as the brightness even when viewing the content from the side. In the sound we still have good news because in addition to the lower speaker which is considered the main speaker has secondary speaker along with the headset for calls. So in this area it will also be able to emit sound. The truth is that the sound is of excellent quality although asymmetrical loaded towards the main speaker where we will hear with more force the audio. But the sound is very good with good bass presence even in the part up here. So overall I really like the sound, it's good quality, it's crisp, what do you say we listen to a little test, although remember it's not the same listening to it live. But the sound experience is also good at the software level where we will find access to Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos for games. Then we have several surround sound presets taking advantage of the fact that the device has stereo sound. And something I love is that you have access to a 9-band equalizer available even without the need to have headphones plugged in. So in this regard it outperforms several of its competitors. It also offers us an audio optimizer to adjust when you are listening to music with headphones and also adapt sound that will also adjust the sound depending on how you listen based on how old you are. But another very useful function at the sound level is the independent application sound that allows us to send the sound of certain applications to the Bluetooth speakers and the sound of other applications to remain on the device. This can be especially useful at some party when you are playing music from your cell phone on the speaker and then you want to listen to a WhatsApp audio or want to watch a video on your cell phone privately. You can perfectly enable it from this section. So it's a pretty useful tool that few devices integrate. As you notice, it doesn't have a headphone jack, so you will need to connect a USB-C adapter in case you want to use wired headphones. But fortunately, if you want to use wireless headphones, it supports several codecs. One of them is aptX to give you a bit more resolution, although ideally you'll want to use the SSC codec present on the Galaxy Buds. So if you want quality audio wirelessly, you can use the Galaxy Buds to have the best experience. The device has three microphones and that is something very remarkable because most of its competitors only have two microphones. The third microphone is going to help reduce noise in windy conditions so it can be very useful. Below you will hear an audio test recorded with this device. Esta es una prueba de audio grabada utilizando los micrófonos integrados del Galaxy A55 5G. Next, you will see a video recorded with this device to test the microphones in a much noisier environment using my home sound system at maximum volume.
As you can see, the microphones pick up the sound very well even in extremely loud environments, so it can be a useful tool for recording concerts without any distortion. The front camera is a 32 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture and fixed focus. It is a high resolution sensor although it does do pixel fusion, so in automatic mode the photos are 12 megapixels. It has a fast aperture mode by pressing the power button twice, so you can quickly open the camera and you can do the same gesture to switch to the front camera. It has two levels of amplitude, in the closed angle are going to be 8 megapixel photographs and as you can see the capture speed is considerably good. In this sense we could say that it is an expert and even notes that if we slide the shutter down we can access a burst on the front camera, something that very few devices integrate. And if we hold down the shutter we can start recording a short video or if we want to keep the recording running we can slide the finger up, then it has convenient tools and shortcuts. At the top it offers us a button to access the filters that we can preview in real time, we can also access the facial beauty effects which as you realize has four different parameters parameters like skin smoothness, tone, jaw size and eye size. Obviously you can also disable these options and something interesting that was only present in the Galaxy S series i.e. in the high end series is the color tone adjustment that allows us to select between a natural color rendition and a warm color rendition so the photos can get to have a very professional touch. In addition it will also have the easy mode showing the palm of the hand to capture the photos. It also has capture by voice commands and you can also enable a floating shutter so you can place it in the area that is easier for you to press it and thus you can be much more comfortable when taking pictures. Within the settings you can also enable or disable the fun mode that is made in conjunction with Snapchat which basically will allow you to have access to Snapchat filters directly from the same system camera in case you want to have this type of effects. Obviously the first time you load it up it can feel a little slow, but once the filters have loaded the execution will be much smoother. Although these are not 32 megapixel photographs, you really do get to see excellent detail at all levels of amplitude. Even though it doesn't have autofocus, I think it does recover a good amount of detail in faces, even at the farthest distance. Although when you are very far away from the camera, it does start to blur slightly. But I think it is still within the range of what is acceptable with the arm outstretched for a photograph with good range and good foreground focus. Obviously the background will be out of focus due to the fixed focus of this lens, but it gives it priority to focus well on faces. Colors are also positive and natural, so I have no complaints in this regard. This phone does not integrate a panoramic photo mode for group selfies, but I think that stretching the arm to the maximum you could get an acceptable photo. Although there are other phones that have much wider lenses for the front camera. Indoors it has a good quality photo, especially for the color that has good saturation. It also feels a good contrast and notes how it appears a little grainy present, although I could not say that it is noise because it does not look like spots of many colors, but simply some texture is seen in these photographs, which in general could pass as a good photo considering that there is not so much light and especially considering that it keeps the color well. But it is not a detailed photo in this kind of indoor conditions. In backlit scenes you notice that the preview is not optimized so there are a lot of overexposed areas. But it does have automatic HDR so it manages to balance these highlight areas well, although I feel there are still some parts that look overexposed and the shadow area I would like to see slightly brighter. So the result is good, but I think it could still improve. At night we also have a very similar result to what we saw indoors. That is... We have a good contrast, good colors, but also a bit of graininess will appear in the darker areas. Although honestly in this case it's not so noticeable, but the result seems positive to me. But definitely where I have not liked the result of this camera has been in night backlight, which obviously is a very complicated environment, but I have seen other devices in this same price and even cheaper devices have a superior result. In this case it is not able to balance lights and shadows well, the shadow area comes out extremely dark. You can use the screen as a flash simulation in conjunction with the night mode to have a better result, but I still think it does not come close to the result I've seen in other phones. I find the night mode quite useful if you're not backlit. The screen gives you a subtle illumination in the form of a circle, so it doesn't look strange if you use glasses. 
And the result also has a good level of detail considering the level of darkness I was in. So this was the best I could do. And again, although it's not a bad result, I've seen other phones give better results. In very, very dark conditions, the night mode it does help with this subtle illumination of the screen and notice that it does a very good job of reducing noise. So I like the camera, but it could improve in night backlighting. Portraits from this front camera come out very nice. Notice how even at night it has a good detection. The background blur looks natural and in the daytime we realize that it is able to keep in focus the objects that are in the foreground, demonstrating the good quality it has in portraits. This is a strong point because almost none of its competitors are able to keep the foreground in focus. Although in this case it had a small blunder, but it really is much better than most of its competitors in this front portrait photography. On the back we'll find the 23mm main camera with 50 megapixels and f aperture of 1.8 plus autofocus and optical stabilization. So it's a really good camera. Meanwhile also on the top is the 13mm ultra wide camera with 12 megapixels and f2.2 aperture with fixed focus. And finally at the bottom is the 5 megapixel macro camera with f2.4 aperture and fixed focus. In this case it is a fairly traditional system in the mid-range although it should be noted that Samsung puts more resolution to the macro camera so it could be a little more useful than the rest of macro cameras of other 2 megapixel devices. Next we're going to do our traditional test trying to capture the number 3 in 2 attempts to see roughly how fast the camera shutter can get for fairly action packed scenes and as you can see I practically managed to capture the exact moment so I think it's a device that manages to perform very well in capture speed. It can also be considered a strong point of this camera. In addition, there is also available the burst that we can launch by sliding the shutter down and you can take up to 30 pictures and I love that the burst does react fast. Notice how I also managed to capture number 3 even using the burst, so the response speed of the device is extremely good and obviously the burst can make it easier for you to capture the exact moment. Although I wish it would allow us to take more than 30 pictures, but I think for the price level we can say that the burst is one of its strong points. Again, in the top right corner button we are going to be able to access some color filters that we can preview and apply in real time, and also facial beauty effects as we saw in the front camera with four parameters. If we tap on screen we can adjust and lock focus as well as exposure but if we want more manual settings we can access the pro mode part where we can go up to an ISO of up to 3200 and a shutter speed of up to 10 seconds. So it really gives us good manual settings. There is also exposure compensation, focus, white balance and at the top we can enable another option for metering type and another option for more advanced settings like contrast highlights, shadows, saturation and of course tint as well. However this device is not capable of taking pictures in RAW for a more advanced post development and I think that's where we will find one of its weaknesses since Samsung apparently wants to reserve this feature for more expensive devices but in other brands it is a feature that will be available. With respect to Smart Capture note that the documents is able to detect them immediately and pressing this button will be able to make an automatic trimming of all lines plus you can extract the text digitally. And although it is a very good scanner tool actually there are other manufacturers that allow you to also optimize the colors to look like a photocopy but in this case is only the trimming of the photograph so I think that although it is a good feature could improve. Fortunately this device has the QR code scanner integrated directly from the main camera interface without you having to install or open another application. This device does allow us to take pictures in high resolution mode reaching 50 megapixels and I think it does have a good level of detail so you can crop your pictures while still maintaining a very good image quality. In scenes with movement notice how the device is able to practically freeze the image with both the ultra wide camera and the main camera so the result seems to me positive in these action scenes. In automatic mode the photographs will be 12 megapixels and the main lens seems to me to have a good quality does not seem to have blur or distortion at the edges and also the color that captures is natural. I think that in general yes I could say that outdoor photography is good with the ultra wide camera the color practically comes out the same as with the main camera with a slight change in the saturation but in this case we notice that the color is almost the same as with the main camera. Saturation? 
But in this case, we also notice a little more distortion in the edges, which is normal in such a wide lens. In this case, in fact, we are in front of one of the widest lenses on the market. So I like the level of amplitude it reaches without too much chromatic aberration. So the ultra wide camera, I did like and notice how in the zoom, we are going to find something very good. In this case, you are looking at the, the photo with 2x zoom. But even so, you can see a good quality in the result then. You are seeing the photo with 5x zoom and finally with the maximum it supports is the 10x zoom that although it is a digital zoom, if you see that, it gets to take good advantage of the sensor information to give a good quality zoom, although I think it is not the best zoom in its category, but it gives a good result. But notice how in this case with the letters it is not the best zoom in its category, but it gives a good result, although it gives a good result. How... In this case, with the letters, it doesn't have some level of optimization, but it still manages to be a good level of detail considering the distance at which that letter was the 10x zoom seems to me good indoors. The ultra wide camera takes pretty clean pictures again. It has a little grain, although it is not noise, especially in these areas of greater darkness. But if you don't get close to see so much detail, you see a very clean picture with good lighting and good colors plus good contrast. The main camera obviously improves a lot in this sense of the graininess that was generated in the darker areas and still maintains good saturation, good contrast and good lighting in backlit scenes. The preview still doesn't look optimized as there are several overexposed areas, but since it has HDR automatic notice that the result is very positive in terms of the balance of light and shadow, although it seems that the face does not come out also in focus as I would have liked, but in general, this type of photography where there are many lights and many shadows could be positive as long as it is a very stable shot with the ultra wide camera, the result is also positive, although obviously having backlighting it reveals, but we confirm that it handles it quite well and that it is not as exaggerated as we have seen in other devices at night, the ultra wide camera manages to capture good quality pictures. Again, we do not have as much detail and there is a bit of grain, but I think the noise management is good enough, especially considering that it is an ultra wide camera in the case of the brighter areas. It is not as good as we have seen in other devices, but I think that the noise management is good enough, especially considering that it is an ultra wide camera in the case of the brighter areas. It is not as good as we have seen in other devices. Even when using the night mode, it still has this bad handling of the more illuminated areas, although notice that in the areas where there was a little grain is reduced considerably when you use the night mode also improving the level of detail in some areas although it also gives us the perception of a little pink color in these darker areas. In the main camera we find a better balance in this more illuminated area and in the darker areas we also have a good noise management so the main camera seems to have a better performance in this type of conditions. In fact if you use the night mode observe how it manages to balance much better these areas of illumination and shadow areas also manage to handle much better the grainy generated while maintaining a good level of detail and good colors but it strikes me that even in the darker areas the ultra wide camera manages to have a considerably good performance a good level of detail and good colors but it strikes me that even in the darkest areas the ultra wide camera manages to have a considerably good performance we must remember that has an automatic night mode then that helps a lot to have a good quality photos from the automatic mode without the need to access a special mode in fact that is why there is not much difference when you use the night mode and when the main camera maintains a very good quality the colors seem to me also very accurate in this night scene Unlike other devices that opt for exaggeratedly warm colors in this case, I find a very good color, good level of detail from the automatic mode. And again, there is not much difference with the result that you have in night mode. And again, there is not so much difference with the result that you have in night mode since the automatic mode result you have in night mode as it is automatically enabled from the main mode. And interestingly, even using the 2x zoom setting allows us to use the night mode and observe the quality of photography we have is something very good considering the level of darkness we had in fact, if something we could reproach is that the darkest area does not look as dark as it should, but that is normal in the mid-range. I also wanted to do a much more extreme test and see how in the preview it is practically impossible to realize what is the element that I am going to photograph but notice how the night mode is also enabled automatically and this is the result that although it is very full of noise the remarkable thing is that it was actually a very dark scene and I think the result is positive although obviously it is still a bit far from what high-end devices achieve in these conditions I think it is a good approach. 
For macro photography, the device has good capabilities as the main camera can focus, and if you apply a 2x zoom, you could get to have even more detail. Then I like the result we have with this camera, and with the macro camera, we could get to have a more uniform focus. In fact, that would be its main point. And also, having 5 megapixels could really get to offer us more detail than the main camera can offer us. However, the colors I do not like so much compared to the colors that gives us the main camera. So the macro camera could improve, although in this device, if I find it a little more useful and if you do not like the colors compared to the main camera so the macro camera could be improved on this device if I find it a bit more useful and if the ultra wide camera's range is not enough for you note that you can use the panorama mode in conjunction with the ultra wide camera to achieve a supreme level of range and even note that the panoramic photography is high resolution so you could also get closer and you can notice good details you could also take panoramic photography with the main camera in case you prefer the extra level of detail that this camera gives you and almost no device allows you to choose with which camera you want to take panoramic photographs but Samsung does. Finally, the portrait photography also seems to me very good, especially considering that if it is able to keep in focus the objects in the foreground and not only the people, so the results can be very natural and positive, the only thing I would like would be to have a better balance of lights and shadows, because here there are some areas that are slightly overexposed, but above all, I would like to allow us to take portrait pictures with a zoom setting. 2x as we see in some competitors for a slightly more natural perspective the portraits are very nice but I think they could improve even more in video recording we will find another strong point because it notes that the device allows us to record in 4k at 30 frames per second not only with the main camera but also with the ultra wide camera which is something that few devices allow at this price but not only that also in the front camera we have this resolution available so the device becomes a very good tool for creating content if you want to record in 4k on the other hand we can also access 60 frames per second using the full hd resolution but in this case will not be available in the ultra wide camera Fortunately, the front camera, if you have available this resolution curiously in the video recording, we can also apply these color effects that we saw available in the photographs and in the lower right corner has a button for automatic framing and see how it will be the framing automatically without me having to turn the phone. So this is especially useful if you are going to place the phone away and have no one to record you so you always, so it's a useful tool also for creating content. While you are recording videos, note that it enables a button to take pictures you can also pause and resume the content and something I love about the galaxy is that it also lets us rotate to the front camera without the need to stop our recording so that in the same clip both cameras appear obviously it takes a moment to make the switch between one camera and another but it is a feature that can be quite useful in the same way it lets you it also lets you turn on the flashlight while you are recording Although, if you switch to the ultra-wide camera, that flashlight is disabled, that happens in all Galaxy, and as you saw, it has these shortcuts to switch between the main camera and the ultra-wide camera, but notice how it takes a little time to transition between the ultra-wide camera and the main camera, and does not offer us an intermediate zoom level, simply offers us to switch directly between the ultra-wide camera and the main camera unlike the other settings that do allow us to have a more specific approach. Also in the video recording we have these manual controls of exposure and focus but if we want to access something more advanced we can also enter the professional video mode which is a positive point in this case we can also modify the ISO and all the parameters that we saw in the photograph but does not have a log recording mode or something even more professional but it does have this type of manual controls. The fact that this device can record video in 4K is a very good point because it gives you a good level of detail plus the video recording does very well in terms of color however when you switch to the ultra wide camera it feels a completely aggressive pause and that will be my main point to criticize it I like that both cameras can record in 4k and that you don't need to stop recording to change the camera but it definitely feels a very abrupt change plus the ultra wide camera has a little warmer colors so definitely when switching cameras it feels very aggressive indoors the ultra wide camera has a little warmer colors so definitely when you switch cameras it feels very aggressive indoors the ultra wide camera has a little warmer colors so definitely when you switch cameras it feels very aggressive 
aggressive. Indoors, the ultra wide camera has a little warmer color, so it feels very aggressive. Indoors, the ultra wide camera has a little warmer color, so it feels very aggressive indoors. The ultra wide camera, I think, does a good job reducing noise in the darker areas and maintaining good contrast and good color saturation. And again, look here, we are going to switch to the main camera so you can see that abrupt transition. And definitely in addition to the abrupt transition, you will notice a significant improvement in image quality as the main camera manages to record with much better quality in this type of conditions where there is not so much lighting so it is able to handle noise well while maintaining good color saturation and high detail level. In backlit conditions, notice that does a good job with the ultra wide camera. In this case, if you get to detect the face, but if you are a little far away from the camera, balances well lights and shadows. If you get a little closer, maybe comes to try to illuminate more the face, sacrificing the background. And with the main camera also, we will find a good performance in this case, if you give priority to illuminate the face, but does not completely sacrifice the background. And that is something that I like. The shadow area is slightly warmer than I would like, but the result, if it is positive, approaching much to what you can offer a high-end device. At night, the ultra-wide camera again will do a good job reducing noise, although if you get to perceive a little noise in the darkest areas and switching to the main camera, you realize that greatly improves the treatment of noise but is not able to handle well the light sources present in these dark scenes, so they come to seem overexposed, which is normal in a device of this price. I think in this sense is where it is most noticeable that it is a device that is not yet the high end and in the darkest areas the main camera. I think it does an excellent job although the ultra wide camera comes to suffer a lot in video recording in these parts with more darkness so it will not be so advisable to use this lens in these scenes so dark the difference between the main camera and the ultra wide camera is very much the main camera i think it handles its focus very well so it gives priority always to focus on faces and it comes out quite well even if i leave the camera suddenly and reappear i think the focus holds it very well and adjusts it quickly even if i am moving i think the focus is not seen to be wavering or constantly readjusting so the experience is good in this regard also note that the stabilization is good even without the super stable mode recording in 4k so when you are walking the movements can be disguised well and also when you are running I think the result is good the compensation movements do not look so abrupt and I really like how it comes out but if you want extreme stabilization you can enable the super stable mode although the resolution drops to full HD but I think in this case if you can go running with much greater intensity and the movements will be well balanced the device does not have a portrait recording mode but it does have a fast camera mode which by the way has stabilization and that is something worth highlighting because there are other devices that do not offer us this feature in the fast camera mode plus it can go from 5x which can be useful for recording people and it can go up to 60x which can be useful for recording people and it can go up to 60x which can be useful for recording people and it can go up to 60x which can be useful for recording people people and can go up to 60x which honestly can be very short if you want to record spectacular landscapes or something like that this is something that i have been asking for several generations and samsung has not yet improved it there are other manufacturers that offer you even 960x speed but samsung stays with 60 and that can fall very short 60 and that can fall very short with respect to the slow motion it disappoints in terms of resolution as it can only be in hd although the result seems positive to me as it is at 240 frames per second so it looks considerably slow and attractive and in fact it also has a super slow motion mode that will go up to 480 frames per second so it looks considerably slow and attractive and in fact it also has a super slow motion mode that will go up to 480 frames per second will go up to 480 frames per second but again in hd so in terms of slowness it is fine but if we would like a little more resolution although being a mid-range device we could somehow forgive it on the understanding that it can go up to 480 frames per second and finally, I had forgotten to mention the zoom issue that in this case, honestly, is not very good in photography. We saw something positive, but in the video, even though it is able to reach up to 10x, it feels like an image a little stretched, especially when you are recording in 4K, does not feel that it really is a very remarkable zoom quality. The front camera is going to record in 4K and that's already a competitive advantage because a lot of its competitors are not able to do this but it also maintains a very good color rendition. It feels very natural and also it does have stabilization which others don't have. So the front camera I really liked a lot and that's why I think it's a strong point on this device. I think it's a good element if you want to start recording content because you do not sacrifice resolution when you switch to this front camera in terms of recording 
backlight with this camera comes to have an acceptable performance here it is also noted that it is not yet a high-end device as if there will be overexposed areas in the background but if it is not a backlight so aggressive I think if you get to compensate well the areas of lights and shadows however not having autofocus again reveals that it is not a high-end device Indoors there will be much more noise present because there is not so much illumination but fortunately it maintains a good color saturation so the result could still be acceptable. I would like maybe a little more noise reduction but that could also cause it to lose a little level of detail. And at night if you have some light source nearby I think the result will be positive although again with more noise than we would like but this also produces that you have a good level of detail and also some good colors although this also produces that you have a good level of detail and also some good colors although it is not as good as we would like it to be. Detail and also some good colors, although the video goes down to 25 frames per second to try to capture better lighting. So I think it is not so spectacular. I like the light capture, but that level of noise and that vibration that is generated by the 25 frames per second makes the result. Not quite convince me also has no way to illuminate your face through the screen, which if we see in other devices, so I think it could still improve with some updates. You also have a fast camera with the same configuration that we saw in the rear camera and I like that it keeps the stabilization and it feels that it goes at a good bit rate because it does not look blurry. In fact it also has a slow front camera which is something that not all manufacturers offer although again it stays only with HD resolution so it is a simple slow camera but it is available and it does not integrate a portrait recording mode but it integrates the dual recording mode that goes in full HD so you can show the rear camera and the front camera at the same time although in this case it only uses the ultra wide camera so in this case it only uses the ultra wide camera so it could still improve with some upgrades it only uses the ultra wide camera so you have fixed focus and it does allow you to move the picture in picture mode frame to the position you want plus it allows you to rotate the view of the cameras but in this case it does feel a bit low bit rate so it is not that detailed and you can also enable a split screen recording mode however again it can only use the ultra wide camera so you have fixed focus and you cannot zoom so it is a dual camera mode which can be useful but it could be better and in fact other competitors do it better. In the software we will easily find one of its strong points because it comes factory updated with Android 14 and One UI 6.1. So we have the latest from both Google and Samsung and also offer us a good policy of updates with 4 years of software updates and 5 years of security patches. So it is a device that will not be outdated so fast with the passage of time. Also you know that Samsung usually add very good options at the software level. For example we will find the modes and routines where we can automate all kinds of things on your phone. Also this can be synchronized with your watch and other Galaxy accessories. So you can make your phone automatically change its settings while you are doing exercise or some other things or even very specifically you can create your routines. There are some already predefined that you can add to automate all kinds of things in your home. For example, a very basic routine could be that while I have the gallery open, I can make the device enable the screen rotation. And when I leave the gallery again, the rotation will be disabled. Then in this same way, you can create several routines. And honestly, to me, it seems something very useful that for the moment, I have only seen present in the Galaxy devices within the Android and environment. In the same way you can create your own routines based on different types of conditions, not only when you open certain apps but also while you are exercising, while enabling dark mode, while enabling Android Auto with some NFC tag based on some specific time or place, then you can definitely automate everything you want. Also remember that it has a different pop-up notification style than the traditional Android notifications and you will also be able to scroll that notification down to open the app in a floating mode. In fact, you can also change the styles of these animations to have an even higher level of customization. And of course you can change the colors of these notifications to be specific or even in an advanced way you can still customize the transparency and duration of these notifications. So so you definitely have a very good level of customization that even allows you to change the color of the notification based on some word in the content. For example, if they say hello, you can say that the notification looks green and if they say goodbye in red color or whatever you want. Also remember that is available. The Edge Panels feature where you can not only have direct access to applications but you can also add other panels as to have direct access to contacts. 
screen clipping tools, direct tasks of certain applications, and many more things as you can even download more panels from the Galaxy Store, then you definitely reach a level of customization and productivity very high with all these tools that you can have at your fingertips. You can also access a theme store where we will be able to download several customization packs that can change your icons, your lock screen, and other things you can even download always on display skins to apply when you have your screen off. Speaking of that note that the always on display mode that is available on this device is slightly different from the Galaxy S24 because in this case if you try to place a picture as always on display only a box will appear and not use the entire screen. Remember that Bixby is also available which is Samsung's voice assistant personally. I find it very useful to control things on the cell phone. You can activate it through voice commands. You can even teach it your voice so that it only activates with your same voice chime or you can hold down the power button to talk to Bixby. I like it to adjust the settings of my device, for example, I can tell it the following set the screen timeout to 10 minutes and watch how it automatically makes the adjustment and in this sense it works very well. Although to query information it is not so good, what benefits does Apple have? In this case it uses Google to give us some answers, so it has improved. Because before it did not use any additional search but now it can give you a little more complete answers. In fact, if you are in a text field, you can also press the Bixby button to start the dictation. See how I am testing the dictation of this keyboard and ready. Then it makes your life much easier also in the app section. We find Samsung experimental functions like the option to enable the application. So see how from this panel bar, in fact, I could open apps in split window, which gives me a good level of productivity. But in addition to the split screen, I can also open apps in another floating format so that I have several apps running at the same time. So notice in this case, I have three apps running at the same time, but I can still open many more even apps that usually don't support these floating modes like Instagram or some others. In fact, I can also resize these miniature apps and I can also minimize them if I slide them to the side. So definitely that the level of productivity achieved on this device is pretty high. I can also have these floating apps, minimize it in Bubbles, these floating applications so I can resume them at any time and I can activate a transparency mode as well. So it offers us many options compatible with all the applications you have installed as an experimental feature. You can also force the dark mode in some applications, although few are compatible, also has some gestures to activate your device as simply by lifting it up or down or by dragging it to the left or right. Your device as simply by lifting it or pressing twice on the screen that is off, or even you can also turn off your screen if you press twice on any empty area of the home screen, making it much easier to use the mode of use with one hand is also very convenient and very practical and also has a function of video call effects compatible with Google Meet or WhatsApp that will allow you to blur your camera or change the background while you're on a video call. See how to start a video call will appear a notification that will teach me to use these special effects of video calls simply appear from the notification panel. Then while you're on a call you slide twice and see how we can access various effects. For example we can change our background to apply a blur on the back or we can have a solid color or any image that we want of anything else. Then as you can see this feature can be very useful to modify your environment while you are in a video call. In fact it also has beauty effects for the video calls has beauty effects for video calls or you can also change the tone if you want a warmer, darker or lighter environment. And finally, you also have the automatic framing function in case you are moving automatically will center your face in the camera. Then I insist that they are very convenient tools when making a video call. And note that within the gallery, we also have tools that can be useful. For example, we can extract text directly from these photos. If we take a picture of a sign in the same way, we can extract people simply by holding down on them. And even without releasing your finger, we can switch to another application in order to send this content, for example, in this way. But WhatsApp is not sent as a sticker, but as an image. And I think that could be improved. Although it notes how we could also save these clippings as stickers to be able to insert them directly from the keyboard and in the case of telegram if they are sent as sticker but in the case of whatsapp they are still sent as images hopefully they will correct this soon
In the photo editor, we will also find useful tools like the eraser, which is not as advanced as the Galaxy S24, but notice how we can even select people and we can press the erase button and it will automatically fill in that blank space. And the truth is, the result is very good generally. Other devices do not have this same level of intelligence, so it gets to stand out a lot. Also note how, if you select several videos, you can press the create button to automatically generate you a video just going to analyze the content and automatically you will generate this video although in this case does not have as many templates to fill automatically as we have seen in other devices so it is not as advanced to select multiple photos to create a collage without too much effort or the need to install any other application is also worth noting Samsung members is an application where you can get several benefits simply by having a galaxy for example gives us access to various promotions and offers not only in services and products of Samsung members but also in the services and products of Samsung only in services and products of Samsung but also in other allies such as exercise services food stores clothing stores and many other things more so it can really be something very useful definitely that Samsung offers a very good experience at the software level and in this case I must also tell you that it has an engine so for example when scrolling in these lists you also feel a feedback in your hand a kind of taps that make the experience very premium seems a minimal detail but believe me that once you get used to this kind of details, you miss them a lot in other devices that do not have it. Let's talk now about security and for that we mentioned the fingerprint reader integrated in the screen that as you realize is an optical reader that does not have exaggerated speed but works well. The detail that I do not like is that it only allows three records so you are very limited in that regard. Especially considering that all other non-Galaxy devices will offer us access to five records. Then if you are a person who usually want to register people you trust so they can easily unlock your phone. In this case you are much more limited. Also does not allow us to change the unlock animation as if we see it on other phones that have readers inside the screen. So it is a limited sensor in several respects. Senses also has facial recognition but you know it is only in two dimensions. So it does not offer for a very advanced unlocking but it can detect that you wear glasses, registration is comfortable and you can also ask that the eyes are open to recognize the face. So many people use it for convenience but personally I would recommend more use something else for convenience that is the extended unlocking. In this case is within the lock screen category. And this works in conjunction with Google to select a trusted place or a trusted device. So once you register your location or your watch or speaker while in that environment will remain unlocked to avoid having to put your fingerprint or your pattern every time. In the case of the password manager we find Samsung Pass which seems to me one of the best additions to this device as it will not only allow you to automatically fill in passwords by verifying first through your fingerprint but also allows us to store within Samsung Pass several things and we can access directly from our keyboard to Samsung Pass verifying again by our fingerprint to fill in either passwords or information from our cards or addresses that we store in this part or even notes that you consider confidential but you want to insert quickly from your keyboard so it really gives you a very good level of productivity we also have the secure folder where we can store applications also that we want to store in our Samsung pass so it really gives you a very good level of productivity Secure, where we can also store applications that we want to have more privately, or we can also store in this part all kinds of documents we can transfer from our gallery to this gallery of the secure folder, any image we want, then it is a much more private environment that we can also encrypt completely and we can customize to change the name or icon of the application. So it is a function that can help you to also maintain another level of privacy only that when you leave you need to lock it so that the next time someone tries to enter again request the password, the fingerprint or method you have requested to enter. Samsung also offers secure Wi-Fi which is a private VPN that offers you a private browsing very useful when you go to connect to public Wi-Fi networks offers you a free gigabyte per month or you can also upgrade to have a greater capacity so if it gives you a sense of greater security 
city when you connect to the Wi-Fi at the airport or a public park. It would also allow you to encrypt the memory card in case you have entered one and if you have kids it has Samsung kits although it is a bit hidden inside the quick settings so you have to edit these quick settings to be able to access that feature personally. I wish it was a bit easier to access but once you drag this Samsung kits icon to this screen you can finally enjoy this special mode. Here parents will give authorization from certain apps and kids can't get out of this mode. Unless you verify first through the fingerprint this way, you can be more sure that it is a completely trusted environment. Also, within the parental controls, you can select how long you want the child to have authorization to use the cell phone. You can also set a time to go to sleep so that after that the phone is deactivated. You can give permission to access contacts, applications, files, or things you have on your phone. And you can also set some applications that you want to be available even if the time has run out in case the child needs to access certain applications. And you can also set some applications that you want to be available even if the time has run out in case the child needs to access certain applications. In case the child needs to contact you, then it seems to me a good tool. In this case, Samsung also gives some suggestions of apps that can be used, but you can disable the suggestions or you can also remove the suggestions of apps that are on this main screen. In fact, Samsung creates some predefined apps that come with some fun effects also that kids can get to use while they are playing with your Samsung kids cell phone. I think it can also be a strong buying point for this device because other brands do not include something similar in this generation. Samsung also includes something called automatic blocker that will help you block the installation of unauthorized applications or block any kind of command when the device is connected via USB. So it also allows you to have a much safer experience and within the device care section you can also access a malware scan in collaboration with McAfee. So it also gives you some level of confidence to have all these tools at your fingertips. And if you happen to lose your phone, remember that Samsung in addition to the Google Find. Your phone tool has its own tools, so it is important that you enable these options in case they are disabled. And remember that Samsung uses the Galaxy device network to be able to help you find your phone. Then it has good tools. And even if you are going to take it to the maintenance also has an option that will allow us to have everything private while you send your device to repair or even let you upload the entire copy of your phone to a cloud of Samsung for 30 days available. Finally has the options of digital wellness that have several other devices but in this case customized by completely by Samsung. So you can see the time of use you consume in certain applications, you can set time limit goals and you can also regulate some other things even reaching the parental controls so that from this phone you can manage your children's cell phones and as I always say by pressing five times the on off button you can start an emergency call. The battery has a capacity of 5000 milliamps and honestly in this case it seems to me that its processor is considerably efficient since in my test the battery did perform in a very good way. Running this battery drainer in the foreground, it reached almost 4 hours obviously. This is from an extremely intense use of the processor and other sections of the cell phoning and keeping this drainer running in the background while we played YouTube videos that Davis was able to reach almost 5.5 hours. So the battery really has a good autonomy, even in this case has a good management of applications running in the background. So the battery does seem to me a strong point and also consider that you can actually access a power saving mode that can help you on a daily basis and you can even enable this additional option for an even more extreme power saving mode in an emergency that will restrict you only up to eight applications that you can use and you can add any application you consider essential although this is more focused on emergency occasions. With regard to the charging power, remember that the charger is purchased separately and that is definitely a weak point supports charging up to 25 watts and do not necessarily need to purchase the original charger. If you want to have a safe charge can also buy chargers compatible with the standard power delivery and generally will be a little cheaper. But I used the original charger to do my charging test and in 15 minutes it recovered 25%, in 30 minutes it recovered 52% and then the charging gets a little slower to take care of the battery reaching 100% in 83 minutes. So the charging speed is not something spectacular as we see in some other devices, although it is not an exaggeratedly slow charge. What I like is that it includes several modes of battery protection. The basic mode will do that when the device 
price has charged up to 100, it will stop charging until it goes down to 95% and then it will charge again. I think it is a good mode of protection for those who want to keep their battery at 100% and then it will charge again. I think it is a good protection mode for those who want to keep still 100% of its battery, but there is also the adaptive mode that will be like a smart charge if you leave it charging all night it will charge much slower, and finally the maximum protection method will block up to 80% of the load. Then you as a user choose how much you want to get to take care of the life of your battery. Then in battery it offers us very good things, but it still does not reach the same level of the Galaxy S23 Faith that offers us wireless charging and reversible wireless charging in this case does not have those features in connectivity. So we will find support for 5G networks and even something that I like is that this device also has support for and SIM. So you can add mobile service of your data plan simply by scanning QR codes. And this is very useful when you go traveling is a feature that is not present in several competing devices and that is why it is worthy to be highlighted and in addition to having 5G we will also have an option to give permission to applications to access the internet using our mobile data or only Wi-Fi. In this way you can better manage the consumption you have your mobile data also includes connectivity for Wi-Fi networks. 6. So you can reach good levels, download speed as long as you have a good router and obviously a good internet provider in the Bluetooth we find the version 5.3. So it gives us a good level of stability with accessories and also has NFC so we can use our cell phone to make mobile payments can be with Google Pay or in this case also with members wallet although this may vary in other countries but even if any banking application supports payments you can use your cell phone with this technology. What it does not integrate is FM radio for those who still wanted that option and with respect to the wireless projection screen remember that it has smart view. So you can project in an advanced way, not only in a mirrored way. For example, you could project only an application or have your screen turned off, so really the projection is very advanced, although you cannot do projection via cable, only wirelessly. Neither has Samsung DeX, but if you have Android Auto, both wired and wirelessly. And as for the sensors, if you have accelerometer, also geomagnetic field sensor, orientation sensor and gyroscope, plus light sensor and proximity sensor is curious because it seems more contact sensor is not enabled when there is something close, but when there is something making contact completely on the screen. So it is a bit strange sensor, but you could get to give that tip if you do not want to have inconvenience in your calls or listening to WhatsApp audios make sure that this area is making direct contact with you. In ecosystem we have something almost perfect from Samsung because for example it offers us the connectivity with the Galaxy Buds even through music share we can share audio with several headphones at the same time or in several devices. The Galaxy Buds can automatically switch devices between your Galaxy Tab or the cell phone remember that the Galaxy Watch is also available but we do not have the perfect ecosystem because the Galaxy Books are distributed only in a few countries so it is noted that it could improve although it already comes with the connection to Windows integrated. So even if you have laptops that are not Samsung, you could get to configure your devices to coexist well with each other. And you can also install Quick Share on Windows computers so you can send and receive files wirelessly with good speed Quick Share. You can also use it with other non-Galaxy devices. And remember that it has other features like answering your calls directly from the tablet as long as you have your same Samsung account. Or you can also continue Samsung Notes or the internet browser on your Galaxy Tab if you had something open on your cell phone. It also has a feature called multi-control that in conjunction with your Galaxy Book would allow you to drag and drop files and more advanced things but I insist the Galaxy Book is not available in Mexico and in many other countries and that will be my main complaint regarding the ecosystem although thanks to Smartings you will also be able to access a lot of devices from different brands to control everything from your cell phone observes how there are endless compatible devices plus Samsung Smartings is also compatible with Matter so you can easily connect many devices devices from other brands to your cell phone to control it directly from the Smartings dashboard which is also within reach from your notification panel in the control section from here. You can also start several routines to automate everything that has to do with home devices and Samsung Plus its. 
and Samsung in addition to its collaboration with Google, where they offer you backup of some photos on Google Photos, also offers you a collaboration with OneDrive to backup your photos on this account. Although the Samsung Gallery, you only find the connection with OneDrive and not with Google Photos, but definitely Samsung has good partnerships for cloud storage, although it does not have its own cloud, but at least it does not feel totally dependent on Google. Let's talk about performance because this processor is new, is the Exynos 1480 and also comes with this device 8 gigabytes of RAM and up to another 8 gigabytes of virtual RAM. In this case it took 2.5 seconds on average to open each application so it seems to me that it is a considerably fast device although it is not free of some small white screens when you switch between applications as you can notice which can be slightly annoying for the most demanding notes as when you switch between applications does not seem to have an ultra fluid response as if we have but what I like is that it does not restart the application completely and really if it came to have a good opening speed then I think if you are a user who has many applications open and want them all to keep running super smoothly I think the option does not seem to be the most viable but if you are not so demanding in that sense I think the device can get to give you a good experience because the processor if it seems to be fast enough only that when you switch between applications might feel a little more clumsy than we would definitely like. Let's do the test now sliding inside these applications to see if you get to notice a very stumbling feeling but as you notice it seems to be responding quite well even loading all these elements let's do the same inside Facebook and again we get to notice something considerably fluid as you can notice then the execution of the applications really is good. The only thing that I think could improve would be the management of all these applications running in the background because at the time of switching between applications you cannot notice a response as fast or as agile. Remember that it comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and in this case it also has RAM plus that by default you cannot notice a response as fast or as agile. Applications running in the background because when switching between applications cannot notice a response as fast or as agile. Remember that comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and in this case also has RAM plus that by default comes on with 4 additional gigabytes but you can extend it up to 8 perhaps in this device. The ideal is to extend it to 8. Although personally I have never really liked using virtual RAM but normally the system Samsung system is usually quite heavy because of all the options that brings included and that could consume a lot of RAM memory and therefore might feel maybe a little slow when you're switching between several applications insist. I think it feels slow for the most demanding but if you're not really the most demanding you will not feel too slow when you're switching between applications we will also do our test to export a video in 4K with a total duration of one hour and a half. 4K with a total duration of one minute. All the clips were recorded using the camera of the cell phone and ready it took about 42 seconds so for a mid-range device is fine. I think it can already give you a little introduction to edit video in 4K. Obviously a high-end device would be much more powerful to export these videos but still I think it could give you an acceptable experience even editing video in 4K. In the storage we will find about 128 gigabytes in the base model. Although personally I would recommend you more to buy the 256 gigabytes edition to have much more space since the price difference is not so much. Although also the advantage of this device is that if you can expand the storage through micro SD then you can buy a good quality micro SD of one terabyte to still have much more space. Although always with the micro SD you might have a little less speed but I think in the storage it does not disappoint too much since the 128 gigabyte edition is a little cheaper. Let's talk about the games. And for that I must tell you about Gaming Hub, which is this application where Samsung collects the games you have installed, but also gives you suggestions of other games that you could run even several of them without the need to download them. So if you are more casual gamers, you could run these games without the need to use internal storage space. But if you are more demanding, you can also have your games installed in the bottom bar. And also note that we can access the Game Booster, which are the additional options that you will have in a shortcut bar that you can also enable. You can select how you want to run these games without using internal storage space but if you are more demanding you can also have your games installed in the bottom bar and also note that we can access the game booster which are the additional options that you will have in a shortcut bar that also you can enable you can select how you want the screenshots to behave in this case also in the experimental section you can enable the alternative management of the games which could cause more heating but it could also improve a little bit the gaming experience in this case we did our test by enabling this option and finally you can also select that the energy from your 25 watt charger or your power delivery charger goes directly to the processor without going through the battery and that can produce a less hot experience when you are playing so it can help you.
When entering a game, notice that the special game booster tool settings also appear where you can select an option for the screen to dim and continue downloading game content without the need for it to be completely suspended. You could also lock the button navigation bar, take screenshots or screen recordings and even access floating window applications, so you don't need to leave your game to reply to a message. You can also enable priority mode which will block notifications and calls to avoid someone in interrupting you while you are playing as well as optimize the internet connectivity and in this case it can also give you some memory and temperature information. You can also download some additional add-ons from the Galaxy Store, then you can enable Game Booster Plus in case you want to improve the performance of some games to customize the experience directly. For example, you can select the graphic quality, the maximum frames per second experience or an automatic mode. In this case, our tests we did with this add-on disabled. We did them with this add-on disabled. You can also download other add-ons like Shooting Assist so you can have a fixed sight while you are playing and you can customize the style and color. And it also has other add-ons like Game Clock which will give you some reminders or timers while you are playing. You can have a GIF creator and also the more extended priority mode plus Perf Z, which is an add-on to be able to visualize and monitor the frames per second, CPU consumption and GPU consumption. While you are playing all this can be downloaded separately because by default it is disabled. In Call of Duty by default gives us the low graphic quality available at a medium frame rate. Of course we can go up to a high frame rate but it bothers a lot that this processor is not yet optimized to support higher quality graphics. Obviously with the passage of time is expected to greatly improve the graphics compatibility to give us available several effects that at the moment are not available. Fortunately in the experimental functions if there there are some options that we can enable and when playing we had a good experience however this was expected because it was a low graphic quality so if you are the most demanding in terms of detail that can give us a good experience. Demanding in terms of detail that can reach the games, obviously in this case we will not have a good option yet, and I say yet because it is expected that being a new processor still has some time to optimize, so that game developers can adapt their content and take more advantage of the capabilities of this processor than in this case we had a very good stability, a temperature that still did not rise at too high, but even in this quality when recording the screen, we could see some small stumbles when loading new scenes on the map are not serious stumbles, but if you are the most demanding gamers, if you will come to notice them. In the case of Legends, we changed the automatic graphic detail to manually set it to a higher level to be aware that it was a test of a mid to high end device. So we set the graphic detail to medium at 60 frames per second. And in this case, the experience was relatively good in the sense that it did go up to 120 frames per second at some points, but it did have quite a bit of high. So we set the graphic detail in the middle to 60 frames per second. And in this case, the experience was relatively good in the sense that if it reached 120 frames per second in some moments, but if it had enough fluctuations and also moments of significant hitches, obviously this I insist more noticeable, especially if you are the most demanding gamers. If you are not so demanding, you could get to notice a smooth experience, but in the price range, and you might find some more powerful devices in gaming. In fact, it's curious that in this case, after about a minute or so of playing, it went down and was limited to 60 frames per second, and in this case, we already had a much more stable experience, but when recording the screen again, we noticed some low peaks then to make gameplays. I do not think it is the most powerful tool, but to play without recording screen, I think it can satisfy those who are not so demanding in the case of SpongeBob. The game gave us the default graphics quality in medium along with the resolution and for our test we went up to 60 frames per second keeping the resolution in the middle and in this case it was surprising that it gets to have a pretty good performance and I say surprised because other devices in this game usually have some drawbacks but this particular device seems to go very well in this content although the temperature rose considerably to 44.2 degrees Celsius but surely this was also enabled from the game hub so it also depends on you as a user if you want to have a management that gives priority to performance although the device gets to heat or prefer a little more traditional management that can get to limit the performance so that it does not get to have so much heating depends on the game hub.
not get to have both heating depends on you as a user but here the experience was really good but when recording the screen was limited while without recording the screen if it reached 60 frames per second with a good fluidity so again confirms that this device is not so focused and finally in Henshin Impact the experience was not so satisfactory in this case by default gives us the low quality but for the test we went up to medium quality also in the quality of the effects and went up to 60 frames per second and the blurring of the movement we kept it low and as you can see the game actually fluctuates quite a bit in its frames per second although it doesn't freeze completely so it's not able to give you a 100% stable experience at very high levels but I don't think it's a very bad experience either since the lowest it got was 29 frames per second but definitely if you are one of the more demanding gamers you would like the graphics to stay much more stable at the high end however in this case you will notice that if you are one of the more demanding gamers you would like the graphics to stay much more stable at the low end. However, in this case, if you notice that comes down at times and fluctuations could become noticeable by several users, if you are less demanding will surely be a satisfactory experience for you, but it should be noted that the temperature in this case exceeded 45 degrees Celsius, reaching up to 46.2 in the external stage. Then I think it is not a very focused on gamers cell because it has other, more attractive points. As a conclusion is one of the most balanced Samsung devices in the mid-range, obviously going to highlight a lot for its construction and premium materials and water resistance in addition to a very good cameras both in the front and back at the software level. We also find one of its most attractive points and the processor. Although it is a major improvement over the last generation could still get to fall a little short for the most demanding games for the moment. This has been all for this video, I hope you liked. If you liked you know you can indicate it and we'll see you next time